Okay, kerosene lighting test number two. This time we've added a wick, a makeshift wick, and we've increased the amount of kerosene to two tablespoons or one fluid ounce. Let's light it. As we can see, we get a nice self-sustaining flame. I'm afraid, however, it's going to burn up my clothes pins that I use to keep the wick and the uh, out of the out of the liquid. The clothes pins are probably going to burn up to the point where they no longer hold the wick, and then the wick may fall down and go out. The flame's getting rather large here, so maybe I should pour some water on it. Although this would make a decent emergency stove in a pinch. Could also be a good way to start a larger fire going involving firewood. I see the wick is completely burned away now. There's now nothing connecting the burning clothespins to the kerosene underneath, but it looks like the kerosene underneath is still burning, presumably, because it's hot enough to sustain a flame at this point. We'll keep watching a little longer to see what happens. Clearly, we, we will need a more durable material for the wick uh, if we can use this approach. The wick I used was just a simple piece of fabric. Hey, kitty. The cat has come to observe the proceedings. Yeah. We're playing with fire. Be careful. Be careful, kitty. I'm not sure quite how much recording time I have here, so it may not last the whole time. I've got my bucket of water handy here in case things get out of control. But so far it just looks like a nice fairly steady burn. This is practice for camping. Oh. I think that might have been a piece of clothespin falling down into the into the liquid. I wonder what happens if I knock the rest of it down in there. Looks like it's about ready to collapse anyway. Interesting behavior. Those pens are almost totally decimated here. They'll probably collapse any minute now. Interesting that the flame is actually getting bigger though. I think there might be a piece of clothespin down in the kerosene now and that might be helping enhance the flame.
one thing about this burning method is uh, the rate of burning is probably limited probably limited by the rate at which oxygen can get down into the cup so when it flares up it pushes air away and then settles down and then oxygen comes in and then it flares up again so that explains the kind of irregular burning pattern we're seeing Hey Kenny Hopefully this mug won't shatter. Seeing as how it's ceramic, it's probably pretty resistant to that. But you never know. If this goes on much longer, it'll be too long for YouTube. Wow. In case you're wondering, the grass here is wet because it's been raining today, so I'm not too concerned about a fire spreading. And just in case I have this bucket of water handy. You can also just stomp it out if it's not too big. I hope this mug is not completely ruined by this process. Oh well, at least it's one of my mugs, not one of my girlfriend's mugs. She might be mad if I used one of her mugs for this. Nearby is the mug I tried to start a fire in earlier. It didn't work because I had no wick. I couldn't light it. I could pour that kerosene in with the other kerosene. That one's sizzling and popping because there is some water. Oh, now that's interesting. I also added some hydrogen peroxide. It does seem to be helping the fire to some extent, although the water is probably putting it out more than the hydrogen peroxide is helping. Interesting. Well, let me just add some water now and put it out, since we're almost too long for YouTube anyway. That did it. Water brings down the temperature, cuts off the air supply. Okay, and that's it for now.